Oh, we're live. <laughs> I was like, wait. Hi, everybody. Awesome. Well, welcome we're to back. another virtual campfire on the Escapers page. Um, I'm Melanie Carr, Vice President of Escapees, and we're also the founders of the Escapers Group. And I am Travis Carr, the President of Escapees RV Club. So, yeah, we're happy to be back again for another week. We missed the last one or two of these. We had some awesome mm -hmm. other hosts take yeah. over, but we're glad to be back in here. Yeah. So if you're new to a virtual campfire and you might be wondering what they are, they happen every other week and they alternate between the Escapees main Facebook page and the Escapers Facebook page. And we kind of vary the topics. They can be about club items. They can be interviews with members. Uh, sometimes we have educational topics on, but uh, they're really just about getting together online like we would around a real campfire. But I think once again this week, we hit all three of those topics. So <laughs> we got a little bit of... Uh, housekeeping to do and some club items to go over. Um, mm -hmm. And then we're going to bring on an awesome friend and guest and uh, do a little bit of education and interviewing at the same time. So yeah, we're excited for that. Yeah. So a couple club items that we have, uh, as you have probably seen on our pages uh, by now, our headquarters will be closed tomorrow, Thursday. That's August 27th. Uh, and that is due to Hurricane Laura. It's supposed to touch down tonight and early in the morning tomorrow. So uh, we're anticipating um, some power outages and closures around the Livingston area. Yeah, we'll see what happens to Livingston, but do please keep your thoughts out for all the fellow RVers and just the general community, especially like Charles area, um, yes. who are our neighbors, and uh, keep them in your thoughts because it's looking pretty uh, mm -hmm. devastating potentially, and Livingston headquarters are right on the edge of that. Yeah. Um, but we do want to give a big shout out. We have sent out information, though, to the park guests of what to do and things like that. Headquarters have been preparing. Um, there's actually, up until probably an hour ago, uh, a lot of the staff in the house preparing your mail and making sure just in case the worst happens that we can, uh, you know, do our best safe. to keep yeah. everything safe and, and secure. And so keep things rolling as soon as possible. And if we experience any closures on Friday as uh, from the aftermath, we will keep everybody updated as soon as possible if we need to do so. Yeah. So next time you... Um, uh call in or write in your message for your mail maybe give a little shout out to those that stayed around and uh, thank them for all their help and uh what they do yeah, and hanging around during the uh the start of the storm so yeah headquarters and park staff they are working hard to keep everybody safe there in the park and for any RVers who may be around an area being affected by that please stay safe please stay safe find shelter if you need and uh yeah well stay hopefully. informed yep yeah so moving on uh last virtual campfire and also uh, during the last virtual Wednesday with David and Cheryl, you probably had the chance to hear about the new winter home base events that we'll be having this winter. We're very excited about them. Um, and those will, we have opportunities for both the escapers group and the hangouts group. And so we've got the map pulled up here. As you can see, there are three for escapers and three for hangouts. And just a very quick overview. Those will take place between November and February. So it's a place to get together in a safe manner. They're limited in number of attendees. There will be very relaxed activities that will be outdoors. Um, so we hope that you can join one of those if you're around the area. And there is a minimum stay of mm -hmm. one month at each of those. But you can stay all four months if you want. As well. And I think uh, the, you know, there's still spots open at all of them. Uh, some may be more limited than others. Yes. Um, but since we're on the escapers page, if you're interested in Florida, now's the time to book because we're, we're evaluating and there goes our doorbell and our dog. But, um, yeah, so Florida, if you're interested in Florida, please jump on that so we can keep track of registration as soon as possible. Uh, it kind of helps us out prepare. So we know kind of yes. what's going to go on there. So we greatly appreciate it. And so would JP, I'm yeah. sure. But if you want to learn more information, unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to go through all those details in a short manner, but. They are up on the escapees.com website and the escapers.com website. So be sure to check those out if you're interested. Yes. And next item uh, for our next virtual Wednesday, next Wednesday, that will be a webinar. And this one looks super exciting. And I think it plays well with the topic we have tonight is uh, Danny Schenkenberg. I hope I said that right. 
we'll be uh, talking about organizing your digital workspace. So that's a great topic for anybody. <laughs> Looking at um, the desk around here, I know you can't see it, but- It's a digital uh, workspace, not- anymore. I don't, you need to learn how to organize your digital workspace because you have too much- You should have made fun of my uh, desktop, my background, yeah. instead of my actual physical so, workspace. So yeah, her entire desktop is literally just icons and rows and. <laughs> I am not an organized person, but my computer area and my computer is very organized. It drives me nuts. It's what crazy. It's crazy. It's, he's not lying, but it's that's crazy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so be sure to check that out. That's Wednesday, September 2nd at 7 p.m. We're very excited to have her on to talk about that. So I hope you can join us. And moving on to tonight's topic, uh, on that note, we will be focusing on remote working tonight. And before we move in and bring on our guests, I just wanted to add if you're looking for any resources, check out the Escapers website. Uh, Carrie, our social media manager, she actually just wrote a great post about how to start working remotely. And that's up on the Escapers blog. So be sure to check that so, out. So and while we bring in Camille Tell, we're, um, if you have questions, you're, you're thinking about things, or please go ahead and throw them in the chat now so we can catch those up with those as we have our conversation or at the end of this. It helps us have a, a little bit of head start on what we're going to be uh, talking about too. So yeah. <laughs> I just got distracted by Sean's comment that said, ha, the legendary desktop. He had the pleasure of seeing it on a Zoom meeting the other day. <laughs> it's bad. Awesome. Well, cool. Well, let's bring on Camille. Yeah. Yay! Hi. <laughs> so uh, cute. That cat. Oh my gosh. This is our new kitten, Mo. <laughs> Hi, Mo. He's even got an M, right? Yeah, so it's actually, we think she's a she, so it's M-E-A-U-X, and that's an M right on her forehead. So she's so cute. She is cute. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for letting me show her. <laughs> no problem. I'm sure you'll see Hi, ours Adam. running around, our dog. No, <laughs> our dog running around at some point. but uh, Or our, they're kind of like animals, but yeah. yeah. Well, we are excited to have you join us tonight. Uh, Camille and Bryce have been longtime Escapers members. Like, gosh, I can't even remember how many years ago now it's been since we met you guys out at Dome Rock. At the yeah, I think, it was I think it was early 2017 when we met you. Awesome. So, yeah, over three, over like three and a half years now. Awesome. That's awesome. So Camille runs a remote work school, and she is an expert at this topic, so we're excited to kind of roll through her experience that she's had with her business and also to kind of feel where remote uh, remote working is going these days. Uh, she also blogs on morethanawheelin.com and she has presented at annual bash. She's had courses on our RVs, RVers online university. So she is, holds many skills. Yeah. So Camille, why don't you tell us a little more about kind of what you do and what remote work school is all about? Yeah. Sure. And I made a mistake of locking this kitten in the room because now she's clawing at everything. But I'm going to just try to ignore her. <laughs> um, first of all, hey, Denise. I see Denise here. So that's cool. Um, so a little bit of my background is in 2016, Bryce and I walked. Actually, we yeah, we walked away in 2016 from very long term corporate jobs. We were both working for an investment company of doing very traditional desk jobs and then after a series of events said, what the heck are we doing? Are we going to continue this for 20 plus more years after housing issues and health issues and all of that? And so we just said, forget it. We're just pulling the plug. And we, in about six months, we had everything packed up. We had quit our jobs. We had said goodbye to friends and family. And we had never really been in an RV, by the way. So unlike you guys, <laughs> didn't grow up with that background at all. I don't know what possessed us to think that that seemed cool. I don't know. I mean, it, you know what it was? It's that we weren't cool enough to backpack at our ages. So we, were like, <laughs> we need a comfortable bed to sleep in every night. So why don't we RV? So it was like a perfect solution. And um, got in the RV and kind of looked at each other like, wow, what are we going to do like for income? <laughs> So we didn't really plan that great before leaving on, you know, how we would generate income after our long careers. And so I sort of panicked and um, started throwing myself at everything. Um, so, yeah, I started the blog and then from there picked up so many different types of contract jobs and remote jobs, including, as you mentioned, 
um, doing a, a, a course inside of RVOU at one point, which was awesome. That was one of my earliest remote jobs. And then from there, just um, organically was able to develop an online school, remote work school, combining my background, which is in corporate training and counseling, um, specifically in career development, with my nomadic and remote work experience to create remote work school, which helps people learn how to find remote work or start a remote business. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. That's awesome. And I think that uh, pertains a lot probably these days with everything going on. I'm just going to throw that out there. Mm -hmm. uh, seems remote work, I'm sure, is on the up and up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, think you even mentioned how tired you were earlier. <laughs> no, um, I, it's like, I want to pretend I'm not tired and be like, hi, guys. But honestly, this is family. I'm exhausted. I just did a two hour coaching call today with a, a group of students um, helping them get their business going. So, you know, and moving and, you know, it's just, yeah, it's been a lot for everyone. I think this is just a very strange year and we're all adjusting and adapting constantly. So I am no different. <laughs> Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, you just said you were on some calls today, group calls. What are you seeing most people come to you for? Like, what kinds of questions do they have? Uh, yeah. Just it, kind of general remote working? Yeah. It ranges. I think before the pandemic, the trend was really more around people being very excited, you know, like, oh, I can't wait to start my RV journey. I, you know, want to find income. What do I do? You know, and then there would be conversations in, in different groups where people would say things like, oh, you should do this and you should do that. And everything from be a travel nurse to start an eBay store to you should blog to start a YouTube channel. So it was like a lot of excitement. And I feel like what's different now, the questions aren't different in terms of what, you know, typically like, what can I do? Where do I find jobs? How much can I make? You know, these are some core questions. I feel like what's changed is maybe the vibe. I feel like the vibe is more like, ooh, now I kind of need to do this. For before, it was a choice. And now I think people are finding that it's no longer an option to learn to work remotely. I tell people it's so critical. It's like it's like a critical skill now that you understand how to work remotely. And I think people are catching up to that reality now. So yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's funny to say that because I totally I totally agree. And uh, you know, Mel and I have worked remote for I don't know, almost Very about eight time. years now, a long time. Uh, you know, and then the past five years or whatever it has, you know, being president and vice president too, still working remote. So we've you know been traveling remote or working from our home base here in San Antonio, and yeah. um, so we've had you know a little bit of that skill set in the sense of just being used to it. So when this all happened, it wasn't something totally new and out of the norm. Yeah, uh, so it didn't really affect us that way too much personally. But for example, going to school, he's doing online virtual school now. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing in, for work. I mean, it's almost identical. Zoom, the way they talk, their their etiquette for online yeah. education, and this remote style of you know keeping your life organized. Essentially, he's learning, and I'm like, wow, that's an awesome asset for him to be already kind of involved in because I think it's definitely the future. Oh yeah. Um, you know, so anyways, mm -hmm. off on a, a rant, but I just totally agree in the sense that it's definitely become a requirement, and even you know, people like our kids are now doing. Yeah, that. I mean, it's yeah. it's going to be part of our our life for sure. Mm -hmm. it's, a it's a good thing. I mean, I understand that it takes a toll on parents, and it really is disruptive to family life. And I do agree that kids ideally should be in school. But just a note on that is it's really good for them to learn these skills because this is the future. And so the earlier that people can learn these things, the, e the more opportunities they will create for themselves. Yeah. And I'm sure that depends on age and all that stuff too. Maybe that applies mm -hmm. to adults too. Maybe it depends on your age. Of how... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So when you do get uh, your clients coming to you with these beginning questions, are you finding, um, it seems like the majority of who you work with are interested in the RV space somehow. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that they are looking for the remote opportunities or a lot of them looking to start their own businesses and looking mm -hmm. for that startup method? It really depends. I, I started off serving only RVers because I was an RVer and that just made tons of sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would say for the bulk of people who I worked with getting into the RV space, I would say the majority were interested in either remote work where they were working in, you know, just like a traditional job working for somebody else, 
who are willing to freelance where they're working for themselves, but it's not like a full on business. Like they're not trying to run some kind of agency or have multiple employees or anything like that. I mean, the reality is if you go freelance, you are running a business, but whatever. Um, and I would say a small percentage are really interested in doing their own thing, like fully where they want their own brand or they want their own agency or they want to offer services or my favorite digital products. That's what I like to help people with. So I would say for every like hundred people, I would say like 80 to 90 are more like, I want a job that's more consistent and maybe freelance, mm -hmm. and maybe 10 to 20 really want to start their own business. And then I would say now I'm not only focused on RVers. I really like the population of people who I call pre-retirement. They're kind of in that mid fifties range where they're looking for like, Ooh, what am I going to do? I can't really retire. I don't want to retire. What can I do now? That is like my favorite age range and um, phase of life, whether they want to RV or not. So, yeah, I get I get a, a good popular percentage of people um, who fit that as well. Yeah, that's a. I, I totally would have thought those numbers would have been reversed. I thought you would have found more people wanting to kind of start their own thing. Now I know you threw freelance in there, and that's kind of like starting your own mm -hmm. thing. Uh, mm -hmm. to, yeah. But but that's interesting. Yeah, I totally would have uh, assumed that would have been a higher percentage of people kind of starting their own thing. So wow. Yeah. Well, I will say this about that. What I've done, you know, I've worked with so many people now. In fact, the other day I looked at the numbers in remote work school. I had 515 people. Wow. And I was just shocked. I was like, wow, that is amazing. And um, I will say that some come in saying I want a, a, a remote job, you know, with a paycheck or consistent paycheck, or whatever. And then they go on a journey. And the journey often is, well, now let me dabble in freelancing. And then eventually they get to, you know what, I'm ready to do my own thing. So I think sometimes it's the security or the perceived comfort of, oh, I just need the money or, or actual need. I need the money coming in. But then there's a tipping point where people develop some confidence in themselves um, and they realize they're ready to, to test the waters on doing their own thing. And I, I love when they get to that point, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are there like common tips that people look for, like, how do I be a successful work remote worker like what are ways that i can focus and hone in on my things do you see a lot of like common questions like that well i don't see a lot of questions because i think people don't know to ask and in a way it's sort of travis like what you were saying earlier it's almost like for you it's, it's so organic to you now you don't even it's like second nature to work remotely but people who don't have that experience don't even know like they don't even know what to know right so I'm more like, I take the initiative to tell people what they need to know. Um, and I'll cover some of those. And I also have a link to a, um, a guide that I think Carenza was going to share um, possibly. But so tips are really ranging from, well, let me back up. Lots of people make the mistake of thinking that they have to know technology to work remotely. Like, oh, I, I'm not good with computers, so I can't work remotely. And yeah, that's helpful especially if you're on Zoom or you're gonna do something very computer intensive, but really it's more about the soft skills. It's like, can you show up on time? Just like regular jobs. Can you show up on time? Are you dependable? Does the boss need to know where you are? Can, can they find you on Slack, on Facebook, on Messenger? Do, are you gonna get your work done on time? Like just core stuff, but it's different when you do it remotely because your boss can't see you. So there's more, discomfort that bosses have or clients have with remote because they lose the ability to run over to your desk or call you in an office or whatever. So you have to make your boss just feel more confident in you. So I'll bundle that with soft skills. And then I do think organization is key. So I'm glad that you guys are having Danny. I know Danny and I know her work um, for digital organization. And it, it gets hard. I mean, you're Sometimes you've got so many different things you're learning and keeping track of that I do think digital organization and then some just good old tried and true soft skills uh, can go a long way. I cannot agree more with the yeah. soft skills side of things. I mean, we've we've preached for a long time about some of these and you, you hit obviously hit some of the big ones. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, th I think the big part is communication and it's it's about like for me, you know, being on kind of both sides is like this whole you have to try harder, mm -hmm. even as, because, you know, we're remote, 
you know, we have staff at the at headquarters that is in the office and we're not in the office. So it's about trying harder, right? You almost have to put in the extra effort for communication and showing mm -hmm. that you're involved because mm -hmm. it's not like walking into an office where you could just meet around the coffee pot. Yeah. You kind of have to make, you have to make those efforts happen because yeah. they don't organically anymore. So yeah. you have to kind of go out of your way and forceful and it's okay to chat about, hey, how was your day? You know, it doesn't have to be about work all the time. It can be that personal connection right. that you would get in an office space is important mm -hmm. when you're remote. So yeah. I have just to it. add to that, you know, it's just being available. Yeah. It's like mm -hmm. we have so many tools and I think you make a great point that you don't always have to be technology savvy to be a remote worker because phone, text, email, there's all these other things like that you don't have to sit on Zoom or Slack all day to be able to do that. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's it is about what Travis said. We have a whole it's just connecting with your employees. And especially I think one thing that our beer space um, is people feeling like when they're away from the office, they're always on vacation and <laughs> they're off messing around while they're stuck in their their office and, you know, doing their day to day thing and that you're out having a great time. But it's not that way. You know, as most people can attest to, you're still sitting behind a computer and you're still getting your work done. Your evenings just probably look a lot different and mm -hmm. you're in place more often. So mm -hmm. it's, it's no different. And just I think that whole just have fun, treat your employees like you are in the office. We have a whole random channel on Slack where we just it's just throw literally a random channel for people just to and, yeah. talk about whatever. And That's uh, cool. Yeah. Um, there was one other thing I was going to say on it, and I don't remember what it was, so I'm going to just forego it. <laughs> well, one thing I was going to say when I was listening to you talk, um, Melanie, about like this, you know, how you work and when you work, I will say we're getting into the RV and then trying to work a regular job at first was really hard for me because I was so tempted all the time to go do like, it felt like a vacation in the beginning. Like I didn't have the discipline. And I will say that that is something that a lot of people underestimate is if you do work in an office or you work for someone where there's a lot of discipline and schedule and you've got employees keeping you accountable and bosses keep, and then you go in an RV and you're working outside of Yellowstone or whatever, and there's a bear, you're like, ah, oh, like it's just so, it, sometimes you're like, I wanna hike, I wanna, you know, go to the lake, I wanna do whatever. So it does take a little bit of discipline to kind of figure out what your schedule is gonna be if you don't, you know, if you don't have one like eight to five. So something but to think about. Important. Sometimes, you know, one thing we, we were so naive a few years ago, you know, we're like, I think we have a pretty good remote work-life balance, that whole term that now is like a third out the window because there's no such thing. But to an extent, you gotta find something that you can be comfortable with and mm. to us that was always i mean we travel in the rv with kids our kids so we have two small yeah. kids and that adds another layer of difficulties for us so it's they get wound up if they can't go outside and play or you're not paying attention to them so to us that was taking a lunch break whether it was lunch hours or not taking an hour going for a hike walking around finding something and you have that flexibility when you're not in an office because you're not stuck to those hours. As long so. as you're still available when right. needed. It's yeah. when needed, right? It's being available when you're needed and, you know, a part of that. But Yeah, yeah. totally. So, yeah. Yeah. Cheryl and Sean just said the same thing in the comments. Wait, you mean I'm not on vacation every day? <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe they are. I don't know. Hey, Cheryl. Yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you know, my big pet peeve is like, when uh you know remote workers like they feel like they can't connect or they're like oh, i don't know i don't know it's like just pick up the phone call it's no right. different like the phone or the you know slack whatever it is that you use for your communication like it should be no difference than walking in somebody's office you should get That's comfortable right. with it to the point that it's just natural to talk to somebody over a computer just like you would in person it's yeah yeah, yeah. So definitely for that so but yeah and just, I, it seems like we're right on the theme of the common challenges. I see it popped up here now. Is Are there any other challenges that people come to you with? Uh, or maybe somebody that's already finding the root of remote working, anything they struggle with that's common? I don't know about common struggles because everyone's so different with mm -hmm. what works for them. I will say the one common struggle, and this is no surprise, is internet. Mm -hmm. So I will say if there is any common Okay, am I still here? You're yeah, here. We, oh, we, we saw a weird countdown. I was like, what is that thing? Um, you know, it can 95% of the time I do just fine with internet. Um, 
but there are times when it is just challenging. You're in an area where the signal isn't great or there's a million people on the tower or you're in a park and their Wi-Fi isn't fantastic and you just have to plan for that. And it just, I would say, you know, for people just starting out, one of the biggest mistakes I see RVers make, new RVers especially, is thinking that they're just going to use park Wi-Fi uh, for their internet. And it's just, that's just not, if you're, you're gonna work, <laughs> That is not the way to go. Um, there's, I'm sure you guys have a ton of resources on, you know, internet. I know you work closely with Chris and, and Cherie. Um, uh oh, where did you guys go? Am I still talking? Can someone tell me if I'm still talking? I just lost Mel and Travis, so I'm gonna keep talking as though I'm still here. Uh, can somebody type in the chat? <laughs> uh, oh, good, Mel. Okay, I'm still. Okay, excellent. So, um, yeah, I mean, thinking you're going to rely on Wi-Fi, not the, not the greatest plan. Um, and just making sure that you're, you know, you're researching where you can go. And um, if that place has good enough internet, I always check places like Campendium um, to look at reviews to see, you know, how the yeah, um, uh, signal is or what carrier is in that area. So just a little bit of pre-planning can go a long way. But other than that, I wouldn't say that there are that many common challenges with remote workers. I don't know what happened there, but it looks like it was funny. <laughs> we were totally so. just messing with y'all because we were talking about internet. <laughs> 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 Oh my god. The reality is is even in a sticks and bricks with yeah, high speed internet. Internet is hard. <laughs> it's so true. I was like, I felt like I was in a play. I was like, just keep reading the lines. Like, <laughs> <laughs> when they don't hey, you did pretty good. So this happened, the exact same happened thing happened to my uh, mom, Kathy, the, the past CEO and president of the club, when we were talking about advocacy or something, I think. And, yeah. And um, it, it happened and she was totally just like. Yeah, some people don't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> it was a test. Did I pass? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Oh, I see other people I know, Georgian and Carrie and Kevin. Oh, this is so fun. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. But oh, yeah, I mean, internet is definitely, and we highly recommend all the time, Chris and Cherie from the yeah. RV Mobile Internet. We have a scapies discount with them, and they're just great people. They're yeah. amazing. So hopefully, yeah. internet in uh, you know, another three, four, five years is not going to be an issue anymore. So we'll yeah. see what happens with the whole Let's Starlink and everything. Not my expertise, but, uh, but yeah, I, but I hear good things are coming. I think everybody, even if you have your stuff together, like I think everybody runs into internet issues, no matter how prepared you think you are. We've yeah. got multiple stories. So part, of the, <laughs> part of the preparedness yeah. is being prepared for what you're going to do when you run into do that situation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like I said, I get by and I do some of the most complex online stuff with video uploading downloading webinars group coaching sessions and i like i said i get by like 90 percent of the time just fine so if that's a fear people have just know that that fear is completely manageable yeah sounds good how do we sound camille we've just got a comment yeah, about our sound does it sound okay now to me yeah i hear you guys just fine yeah all right. cool cool all right back to where are we we're somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on into some jobs that you've actually seen people get connected with on the road. Maybe some of your clients or just things you've seen in general. What are some yeah. jobs that have come to life? And before you answer that, so, you know, it could be inspirational, like just to inspire yeah. others listening in. And if you're in chat, like be curious to hear what you guys what do. do. You do? Yeah. What do you guys do for remote work or income on the road in general? Be, yeah, you know, I'd love to see that. And I see some questions. There's one here real quick from Tim Schilling. Any suggestions for folks who employers require a VoIP office phone? We have everything figured out except that one. Oh gosh, that's a voice over IP phone, right? You know who a resource is for that is Denny, I believe. Oh, he Denny, yeah, Winkowski. I don't know how he has it set up, but I know it can yeah. be done. Right. Uh, Denny from uh, the RV Outlaws? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, I'm sure in the Escapers group page, if you like, We're putting you to work, Denny. <laughs> He'll love it. <laughs> be a good one, yeah. I'm yeah, yeah that'd, be good. that'd be good. Yeah, I don't know specifically how, what, how to do that, but I, I feel like I've done it before, I guess. I feel like I've done just about every possible setup, but I just don't have the tips for that one. I'm sorry, Tim. But Denny will know. 
Um, I would say some of the, you know what, jobs. Wow, so many things. I'm going to tell you some of the ones that um, a group of my students who were doing the business program I do, different businesses they started. Because I thought mm -hmm. there were some really unique ones that I was, at first I was like, I don't know how that's going to work. But people make stuff work. So what, an escaper named Ruth, um, who I met at the Bash earlier this year, she does dog massage techniques virtually. So um, yeah, so like helping pets reduce stress and anxiety, which was, we started working together before the pandemic, she had a totally different way of doing it. And then when the pandemic hit, because she wanted to help people's pets be active and go outside and hike. And you know, these were like elder pets. And when the pandemic hit, nobody could go anywhere. So then we shifted it to how can she help people bring down stress and anxiety for their pets using massage. She used to be an in-person animal massage person. That doesn't work. So she taught people on Zoom doing that. Um, there's everything from energy work I've seen people do online, and then obviously things like customer service, um, you know, IT work, web work. Um, you know, these are some standard things that, that, that people do. One of the weirdest jobs, I will tell you, one of the earliest jobs I applied for was scooping alpaca poop on a ranch. <laughs> Travis was like, what? He's like, I can, I can do that. I do like some alpacas. I, don't know. Yeah, I love alpacas. <laughs> we love alpacas. And I found that job on Craigslist. I was sitting around in Oregon. It was raining cats and dogs. And um, our RV was in the shop getting repairs. We had to stay in a bay for like four days. And I don't do well with nothing to do. And this was before I was like doing much of anything because I was so new to RVing and everything. And I was like, I gotta, I gotta do something. So I got on Craigslist, started looking for jobs. I found four jobs in a weekend. And one of them was scooping alpaca poop, which I almost took, but I didn't. Because then I found this other job, which was a little acting gig, where Bryce and I went in and we did a little acting thing for like an hour. We had to act like foster parents. And we each got paid a hundred bucks and then we went out and had a steak dinner. So okay. awesome. <laughs> so, so, I mean, it sounds like a little bit of creativity goes a long way. Oh yeah. I would say <laughs> that was a very creative. See, that was before I really understood how to navigate the whole remote work like platforms. And I just knew I could get jobs on Craigslist because I've been working Craigslist list for like a decade. Mm -hmm. And so there's an example of like jobs you can do in person, you know, maybe when the pandemic's over, um, you can do them in person. It doesn't always have to be on a computer and highly technical. You can just pick up odd jobs in the places you go. It's a great way to learn more about the local culture as well. Yeah, that's super cool. And it's a little bit different than like a traditional work camping job. You're still doing something that's temporary and in one place, but it's fun, wacky ideas. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> one yeah. common thing I've seen a lot of, we've met so many people who are either like living off of rental income from housing or flipping yeah. houses. So right. yeah, flipping houses. I'm like, you flip houses from yeah, the Yeah, that I'm was like a couple we met um, when we were super cool and we had an airstream and we were all in the airstream community. They kicked <laughs> us out a few years ago when we <laughs> traded in our airstream. But we used to have friends in the airstream community. And yeah, one of them, we were like, we had just met them in person. We met them on Instagram and they had kids. And yeah, they told us that we were like, wow, like, so they, we're actually like flipping and renovating them and then selling them. And then they'd go and hit the road and stay on the road for a while. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of work, but it pays off. People do so many cool things, flipping houses, building things, um, other things I've heard of. And I see people questioning, they're like, you can, you can scoop all pack of poop remotely. No, no, no. It was like, you'd have to go and actually touch the poop. So <laughs> it's a new app. You're just telling people it's, what to do. I'm sure they have an app for that though. To scoop out pack of poop. I'm yeah, that there's a, probably. <laughs> probably. Um, Declan's probably got it downloaded on his iPad. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, by the way, I see Bear here. Hello, Bear. So good to see you. I just talked to Bear earlier today. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys, it's so limitless. There's so many different things people do. I wish I had. Oh, oh, there's this woman, you guys. This is so crazy. There's this woman who teaches people how to make candy apples. It's an online course. She sells it for $200. And last year, in about two months, she made $60,000 selling a course on how to make candy apples. I know. I was like, I'm still in the wrong Hi, escapees. Yeah. Well, you just gave me all these ideas for my other hobbies. Right. Money off of this. 
<laughs> but that actually reminds me. So uh, I'm in like this cookie obsession where I make those like royal ice to sugar cookies and chocolate chip cookies and stuff. So we yeah. went, I made Travis go with me to Cookie Con, which is a cookie convention. <laughs> and I met this lady there and um, she like was super cool, inspiring. So I started following her on Instagram and she just bought a camper. So during COVID, they were like, we got to find ways to get out of the house. And so now she's in the RV world, but mm -hmm. she's pivoting to like teaching online courses versus actually making and selling the cookies. Yes. Business that way. Now it's all going to be like online. So I love it. She should. I think it's the best thing because you can do now. I'm really going to go off on um, tangent here, but I think it's really cool if you can diversify your income streams off the same uh, skill or talent. Because you can diversify, but you don't necessarily have to start a million businesses. You can take something like cookies. You can still bake cookies. You can teach cookie baking. You can consult on cookie business. You can create cookie patterns, right? So you can start to create all these different revenue streams off of one really awesome business idea. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Yep. Yeah. So guys, just hone it in. <laughs> Use your skills. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> yeah. So hey, I'm getting so excited just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> it you, like you said earlier, it's really limitless. You know, there's yeah. so many opportunities out there, especially with technology and where we are today. I'm gonna throw something in there too uh, that we didn't talk about that I, I personally feel is kind of a big thing and it ties into either inspiration or just learning is the community. How often do you find people kind of inspire or get ideas or get connected with jobs or opportunities via the community and just participating and being active, whether that be yeah. escape for escapees or at an in-person event, whatever that is. Um, yeah. Yeah. How, how, what do you think? It's huge. It's so critical. Um, and unfortunately, we don't have our in-person events. Otherwise, I would say absolutely network in, in person when you can. But certainly, you can replicate the networking in these groups. When I first started, that's how I found most of my jobs, was networking in different groups. In fact, I think the way, I'm pretty sure, the way I got the job with RVOU in the beginning, I don't know if it was you guys or somebody else at Escapers, Escapees, that was like, hi, 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 I write courses. You want to hire me? And I think at first, people were like, Ugh, who is that lady? She was a little, <laughs> she's a little eager. But six months later, six months later, you guys contacted me. And so you just never know when yeah. you plant a seed and you grow it. And if you do that in enough communities and, and places you're hanging out online, in person, you can create a lot of business for yourself organically. It's, it's even better than any real job platform that's out there. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, putting a face, you know, if you would have just contacted us, we would have been like probably the hundred other emails every day that are just like, I don't know. What is this? Yeah, you know, but, but, but the fact you that we and knew you person, and yeah. your personality mm -hmm. and were mm -hmm. you obviously speaks a long ways. I think. Travis is really just plugging our events. Like, hey, come to an event and you might get a job. <laughs> you don't get a job. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, isn't that how we got Brandon and Prenza too? I don't know what yeah. you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> opportunities lie. <laughs> uh. Oh. Georgianne had a good question earlier that I didn't want to miss. Uh, she yeah. said, what do you recommend for newer remote workers to avoid a Zoom burnout? It's definitely a thing, especially yeah. the past few months. Yeah. So actually, ironically enough, that's my next product is teaching people how to actually deliver um, engaging and um, effective training online because what I'm seeing. So this is my background. My real background is in corporate training. I'm a career trainer in all environments. And what I see happening on Zoom, because so many people have been forced into this, is a lot of bad training. I mean, no offense to anybody, and you guys are really good, actually. Oh, I was about to say, I was like, oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. You know, <laughs> but like, you know, the talking head, and the like, the droning on, and the reading off of slides that you see people do, and it's a burnout for people, and unfortunately, if people are running their business like that, they will lose their clientele. And so there are a lot of different things you can do. You can do things like breakout sessions on Zoom. You can stop talking for a while on Zoom and let people go work on an activity and then come back together. There's little tricks that you can do to reduce the one dimensional, I'm just hearing information, information, information. You know what I mean? So um, things like that. Well, one thing that really helped Brandon and Kearns specifically was that snap camera. 
Because they would just come on the camera as a pickle or Tiger King. Eventually, though. Tiger King as a potato. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so that was fun. But yeah. I think the one thing, you know, like Travis was saying earlier, is like we've always utilized Zoom and technology because we're remote workers. But now having adapted so much over the past few months and all the changes we've had to make as a company, I think mm -hmm. that burnout is so... so crazy right now because it's almost like we're like on back-to-back -back meetings mm -hmm. some days so my recommendations is you know take it easy five zoom meetings in one day you're going to be so exhausted by the end you of still that need day. the time to do the work you know yes yeah and that's the other thing is you can be on a meeting all day and then be like well now i have all these other action items from these meetings yeah. and no time left in my day to do it so yeah I'm a be mindful of, like you're scheduling those out yeah, you bring up a good point. I'm a big fan of working meetings. Like when we get together, mm -hmm. we don't talk. We just work together on Zoom and then we're just there and we're helping each other out. Things like that go a long way. So, mm -hmm. cool. so we got about 20 minutes left before our, they cut us off and kick us out or whatever they do. <laughs> I don't remember too often before, but yeah. do we want to move into kind of the more questions? I see uh, David Glover's got a Pretty broad question. I think we mm -hmm. hit some of them. Uh, how is work life and RV life manageable? I mean, that's a pretty big overarching question. Work life balance. <laughs> I think we probably all have our own answer and that's a really, mm -hmm. I don't, do you have anything or you want a specific well, answer before I rattle like a talking head as Camille would say? One thing, one thing that I have always said, I feel like we have an extra layer obviously and I know many people and we're only part-timers. We don't have all the same struggles with a lot of full-timers, especially with kids. But we do have that extra layer with having two kids, uh, working. Even though we have the flexibility to set our schedule, we still have a headquarters in Livingston. So we try our best to work around their hours when possible and be available. Mm -hmm. So the big thing to us, because we would burn ourselves out very quickly traveling. Mm -hmm. And one thing we learned, you know, is try to schedule those travel days on the weekends um, so you're not moving around during the work day. Or at least uh, don't try to work on a travel day if yeah. you're the driver. Even right. Especially. Well, one day we got, everybody loves to tell that story about how we got stuck in Sedona and we were actually going to be meeting, I think it was with Brandon Kernza that day. And we were like, hey, we can't make the meeting because we got stuck. So Literally stuck, <laughs> not like, like literally stuck, like act yeah. wheels off the ground stuck. Like. Yeah. So we have little tips here and there that we found work best for us that may not be the case for everybody that some people may not want to travel on the weekends because they want to enjoy their time. So stretch out your trip then. Stay some places longer than you normally would so you have time to experience that. And what I would say is I think it definitely depends on the level of complications you have with your life, right? Yeah. So for like you were talking about our kids. You know, the fact that we both work for the same company means we're on the meetings at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, things like that can really add up into, is it manageable or not? What type of job is it that you're doing? Is it something that's fully remote? Is it something that you're going to have to, you know, be from eight to five on East Coast, even when you're in the West Coast? You know, like, what, what are these circumstances you're going to have to meet? And that definitely can have a factor on what is manageable, in my opinion, on, and what you can pull off reasonably. So you've either got to make adjustments or be willing to possibly get burnt out. And that leads me to... The reality of it's always safe or what i would say you should always have an exit plan an exit strategy mm -hmm. going to go mm -hmm. on the road um you know be a full-time rvr specifically it's it's a good idea to have some type of backup plan to mm -hmm. okay if this doesn't work like i'm hoping what am i gonna do mm -hmm. so, yeah, so true. i do think too sometimes it's a little hard when you work live play everything in one space in an rv I think if you can set up some some little rituals for yourself that can say, okay, when I do these three rituals, like for example, the first thing I'm going to do in the morning is look at my to-do list. Then I'm going to log in and then I'll check my emails. Okay, I'm in work mode. And then when I'm shutting down, you got to have something like, okay, the last three things I'm going to do. And then when I'm done, I'm done with work. Is try to find some boundaries. Otherwise, it is. It just all gets cobbled up into one giant day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And well, especially when you're in a small space and like your workspace is there. One thing um, is Mark and Julie Bennett, their old RV from RV Love. Uh, we did a tour inside theirs one day and he had like a curtain. They converted mm -hmm. like the bunk okay. section into their office or his office. Yeah. 
And he, he was working uh, for a corporate job back then. And so he was like, at five o'clock, I shut the curtain and I don't even look at my computer. You know? That's good. Yeah, that's smart. And then I'm going to give some bad advice, but we used to give this advice all the time. And it still actually works for me. And I think Melanie kind of does it too. And Camille, you're going to hate this. So just totally tear it apart. <laughs> um, but for me, this is what I, so, so, you know, when we work from home, we work differently than we work in the RV uh, in the sense of it's a little more structured from home because mm -hmm. you know, we don't have travel days. We don't have excursions. Mm -hmm. We don't have the things we want to do. So what also makes it manageable so we don't get for what works for me for work-life balance is I work almost when I want to work. Now there are exceptions <laughs> to that rule in case in the sense of I just yeah. have to work sometimes and be available yeah. projects I have to get done and blah, 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 blah. But right. generally speaking, I used to call it, we used to call it the focus bubble mm -hmm. is okay. work when you're motivated to work because you'll get more work done and be more productive. If you're forcing yourself to work from eight to five, if you oh, don't yeah. have to, you're just yeah. really sitting behind the computer wasting a ton of time being miserable not exploring so it's really for me it works really well to do yeah. a couple hours of work if i get burnt out cool i'm gonna go for a hike we're gonna go town come back and i may work till nine o'clock at night if that's what i'm motivated to do so a lot of it's kind of this self discipline and realizing when you're gonna work you know being responsible and and taking advantage of those key moments when you're like oh great idea or man i just want to get this knocked out and take take full advantage mm -hmm. of those times and the other benefit of yeah, that actually, are, oh, go ahead. I'm gonna say, I'm actually an advocate of that. I think that's really good okay. advice, Travis. I'm not one for um, everyone needs to work a structure. I actually believe that if you work at your peak, whatever that is, you're gonna get way better work out of you. So I'm like, I'm actually like you. I work whenever I feel like it, yeah. so. And I was gonna say the perk of that, you know, is when you are in a very crowded area, like a tourist area, and you having the flexibility to take an hour or two to go see that yeah. horse attraction that will be crowded at the evening time when everybody is off of work going to do it or on the weekends is beneficial in other ways. So it, mm -hmm. there are definitely advantages to, to working that way. And then to yeah. follow up with David's comment, I would say that's a lot of big questions. <laughs> I would definitely check out the websites in our past virtual campfires and webinars. Mm -hmm. We actually had a really recent topic on male domicile. Um, and, and all of that kind of stuff, which relates to doctors and things too. Um, we've even had, mm -hmm. I'm sure, I think we had an insurance webinar as well. So that's, I would check out the website, go to the education tab. There's a webinar tab, check out the YouTube channel. Uh, David, you should find a lot of that information. Um, and I'm sure others will also uh, yeah. share. So we have but, one more, uh, yeah, there's one more question and then I kind of want to move into, Sean actually hit on something that we plan to talk about uh, to wrap up as well. So let's take this one. It's, tips for two people working at the same time in the RV, both on Zoom or calls. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's such a disaster. Um, <laughs> yeah. Bryce and I have dealt with that. Usually one of us would just go into the other room or mm -hmm. find somewhere else to work or wear headsets, you know, the best you can. You learn to tune it out after a while. I don't have any secrets that somehow are going to, you know, solve that problem. I don't know. Do you guys, how, what do you, the what only do you thing I can do? The same thing if you've got a door shut it off um just be mindful of what the other one's doing and how long they'll be on that call sit outside have one person inside outside i've gone to town before like in quartzite to get away from the kids and the chaos that was happening in our rv mm -hmm. so it's just yeah find a quiet space it's that's definitely mm -hmm. i would Especially say depending if on it's your if you're doing you know over like what we're doing headphones you know mm -hmm. if you're having to do phone calls that's a little different um but yeah. headphones go a long ways a good mic goes a long way because it won't pick up a lot of the background noise mm -hmm. um but really all i can recommend there it's one of those just not so bright sides of being in the rv working mm -hmm. you're both working mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys have a, I just saw a question we didn't answer from Jane. Can I, can I quickly yeah, try to answer that? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's back away as I just was scrolling through. She says, I had a home business, a medical billing business from 85 to 95, but retired from merchandising, which is very much in person on location. I would love to find something remote to supplement my retirement, but I don't have quote unquote business skills. So Jane, I'm kind of hoping that we've answered a lot of that organically through this conversation where you talked about you don't necessarily need business skills, soft skills uh, are better, you know, just good core working skills like you would in any office. Maybe if you, you know, can you log into a computer? That would be good. Um, and, and then really trying to find a job that aligns with what you're good at and what you like to do. You have skills because you did a 
a business before, you do medical billing, you've done merchandising, so you've got a lot of skills to pull from. And I think if you just start looking and networking and thinking about what you might like to do, um, I think that you're totally qualified. So don't don't worry about needing business skills. I don't think that that's necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Great answer. JP's mom is here. Hey, hey. JP's mom. Hey, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. We love it. <laughs> She's always on. <laughs> All so, right. So that last uh, little question that Sean had um, is kind of something we wanted to hit on with you a little bit tonight too. Is uh, he said, "Have you noticed an influx of people who were forced to work remotely in the pandemic who have entered the RV lifestyle for the first time?" And based off of that, you know, one of the questions we were going to ask you is kind of, "What do you?" forecast for the future of remote working. Okay. Obviously, a lot of companies have been forced into it and it's opened up yeah. tons of opportunities for our space. So yeah, I, I don't know if I can confidently answer that the pandemic has, I can confidently say the pandemic has forced people in remote working. Mm -hmm. And what I can give you my forecast on the future, because I've done a lot of research, but I don't know that I can correlate. And then how many of those people are getting into RV life? You probably have better data on that than I do. I will say that it probably, what I'm seeing is it might have accelerated plans that people already had, um, where they have to do it faster than they anticipated. I don't know that anyone overnight was like, I know, I'm going to jump in an RV now. I, I don't know that I'm seeing that. But in yeah, terms okay. of like, go ha have you? No, no I, go ahead, finish your thought though. I don't want to interrupt. No, let's stop there and then I'll tell you <laughs> my uh, I mean, my inclination to kind of what we've heard seeing is definitely RVing is picked up trends you know this was supposed oh, to yeah. kind of be a downward trend mm -hmm. RV, sure. rvs are selling at record rates again and dealers can't keep sure. up with after everything so i think where that kind of leads is the correlation may not have happy, happened yet so mm -hmm. for the for example people are getting sent home to work remotely yeah and then they're gonna go oh rv is a safe way to travel and then they're gonna go oh wait maybe instead of working yeah. from home i can work in the rv That's so i so think funny. it'll be if That's there is true. a growth, which I do see, yeah. I do think there will be some sort of growth. How big or small, I don't know. I don't know if yeah. anyone really knows. But I do think there will be some some effect. And I think it's going to be this gradual effect of realization of, well, wait a second. Because the first step is realizing you can work from home, right? Yeah. So the first yeah. thing to me realizing you can work in an RV is, hey, yeah. I could do this from home. And then you go, but wait, an RV is a home. It's that connection that I don't know if it's fully there. Right. But they're the one. I agree. That's a very good point. I hadn't thought about it that way. You're right. I mean, RVing is definitely booming again. It's the safest way to travel. And the, tra you know, in terms of travel, that has picked up with RVing. I think you're right. People will realize, oh, hey, this is, this is something I could do long term. So that's good. That's a good one. In terms of where we're headed in, in the job market, it, this is like crazy to me because I've been predicting a remote uh uh, increase for a while now, but I didn't think it would happen until like, I don't know, three to five more years, just looking at the trend lines and where we're going. I could never have predicted a pandemic that would have forced so many employers, including my past employer, who in 2016, I said, I'd like to work remotely and do this thing. And they were like, oh, no, no, we don't do that here. Blah, blah, blah. And in the matter of a week, they let thousands of people globally work from home and still are, and probably will continue to into 2021. And with companies like Google telling their whole workforce, don't come back until July, 2021, this is the future. I mean, it's just got here way faster. And then let me give you guys a couple of stats that are super interesting. Mm -hmm. um, the growth rate of full-time remote work over the next five years is expected to double. 50% um, of remote, of, even if, an employer has 50% of their workforce working remotely, it saves them $11,000 a year per employee. Yeah. So they're catching on, they're gonna save money. And 56% of managers feel like working remotely has gone better than they expected, which they were afraid that it wouldn't work. And then 62% of hiring managers say that they are going to continue to, to build remote workforce, hire remotely, create more remote jobs. And so while we're hearing all this grim news about the job market, which is all true, what you're not hearing about is the growth in the remote job market because that doesn't make for a great news story. So, but that is happening and we'll continue. One thing that 
I said is like that overhead for employers that they're going to save on. That's something yeah. we have been preaching for years, you know, as mm -hmm. we built and tried to grow out the RV or job exchange. That's something that we wanted to highlight was to employers to be more open to a remote oh, workforce, yes. especially our peers who are productive. Uh, right. And it saves you in the long run, because even if we had, even at our headquarters in Escapees, we have a huge building. If we had mm -hmm. all of our remote workers in-house, we wouldn't even have enough space. We'd have to expand and do all that mm -hmm. time and money. Mm -hmm. In addition, yeah. that's like another big opportunity for employers that they haven't really caught on to yet is the job pool. I mean, the, the, the pool mm -hmm. of employees of mm -hmm. the people you have tapped mm -hmm. into when you expand for remote uh you know so when you're in a location especially in rural areas or things like, like that you have a very limited pool of people unless you're going to move yes. somebody over and offer in a big enough incentive to bring somebody there you're really limited on on the talent that you can get mm -hmm. when you open that up into a national scale or even beyond mm -hmm. mm -hmm. really expand your horizons of getting the right talent you know the right pay it, it just becomes a a mesh uh of mm -hmm. opportunities that you just you, you wouldn't have without being remote. So yeah. it's so true. You're seeing like a mass exodus of Silicon Valley right now. Yeah. I mean, Silicon Valley is going to get hit really hard with housing, um, a housing slump because they're all leaving. They can leave now. They can work anywhere. They're going to like rural areas and places that are affordable. Right. So very okay. interesting. That, oh, go ahead. Sorry. We could probably go on forever <laughs> talking about that. But that I know, was yeah. like, oh, one company in Silicon Valley, which is kind of scary and hopefully other companies don't start on this trend was that they were uh, going to base salaries off of them living. So Silicon Valley is like a totally yeah. different animal. And I know so yeah. many people who have left those jobs because mm -hmm. they couldn't afford to live in Silicon Valley and they didn't want that lifestyle. So yeah. hopefully yeah. all of these other companies that are realizing the potential for remote workers understand that you keep your employees happy because that's a bad path to take. You should keep your employees yeah. happy treat them the same that you would anybody in your office or like that. And you will have the happiest, most productive employees. You shouldn't have there. built in Silicon Valley. That's yes. what I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I think those are all awesome, positive, like notes to yeah. end on for sure. And kind of, you know, what we're going to see. And I think it's good for all of us in that way. And it's in regards to this topic, uh, of mm -hmm. remote working and yeah. technology is mm -hmm. only going to get better because of it. It's a lot of good there in that yeah. regard. So, yeah, for sure. For sure. But Camille, it's been awesome seeing yeah. you again. We miss you so much. We'd love no, to see you an actual hug in person. But I know. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your expertise with the audience. And if anybody's watching this later, still feel free to chime in, uh, leave your comments. We'll try to monitor it if there's any questions we missed. But otherwise, yeah. we so hope you all enjoy your Wednesday evening. Check Camille's uh resource out too. What's oh, the link? What's the best place to find out more information? Uh, you can just do morganwheelan.com and there, there, there's the link again. And then you'll see some various things about remote work there. This one is a guide that I wrote, uh, the 10 top tips for working remotely or starting a remote business. Yeah. Awesome. Grab that. Thank that's a guys. That's free, right? The resource. So yeah, that's free. Totally free. check it out. Yep. yep. All right. And to all you watching, stay safe out there. We love you. Miss you. Thank and, you. Uh, we'll hopefully, see you soon. Everybody. All right. Safe. Thanks, guys. Right. We'll see Bye. you next Wednesday or two weeks from now. Next Wednesday <laughs> at seven. I mean, for the camp, <laughs> the whatever webinar. it is. What is the it? Webinar. The, the <laughs> webinar. Jesus. <laughs> all right, guys. <laughs> Take Bye. care.